Hi, this is Jim here from Drunk Dorks. Um, I've been working on a lot of projects lately, mostly writing and uh, just indie game that I mentioned months ago. I've been working on on and off for two years. Uh, it's kind of been on the back burner for a while, but I wanted to show that I've at least the beginning of the game to show that I've actually do have a prod uh, product that I will eventually be rolling out. Um, this is uh, currently untitled. The working title is Project Shadow. I apologize for the complete lack of music, but this is like super early pre-alpha. So there's a lot that isn't done, although most of the in-game systems are actually uh, already complete. The basic idea of the game is that it's an homage to the 8 and 16-bit era of JRPGs. Uh, specifically, it's a love letter to Earthbound. Um, and I think that'll be evident with the graphic style, but I've also added in a quest log, and there's actually tiered equipment, much like your modern uh, MMOs and uh, ARPGs and dungeon crawlers. In fact, every enemy in the game has the possibility to drop up to four different pieces of unique equipment, and... That's going to go a long way to replayability because you could play the same area, the same game multiple times and have completely different loadouts for your characters. Uh, the other thing, too, is that the gear is designed to drop in an area where it's actually useful. A lot of games will give you an item that's completely just garbage. Now, there's some garbage items in here, but if you're in an area and you fight a monster and an item drops that when you equip it gives you a fire skill, you can rest assured that there are enemies in that area that are weak to fire. Uh, I've made a few decisions on how I want this game to go. The leveling rate is kind of slow. It's to encourage you to do side quests. You can play them without side quests, but that's basically like the hard mode version of the game. Um, I do not want the player to run out of healing items. It's Combat is intentionally somewhat difficult, but I don't want a player to die because the game is withholding. I want the player to die because they've made a bad decision. So, anyway, I'll show you the beginning. It's a little bit dry, but, I mean, as tutorials go, they tend to be kind of dry anyway. But uh, let's start here. Uh, sorry if the controls are a little jumpy, the Xbox pad. Uh, works well for this, but the stick, you have to use a stick and it gets a little wiggly. So we'll start here, new game. I'll try not to go too fast. Now this here is because the native version of RPG Maker VX Ace does not work well with certain NVIDIA cards. I have a uh, mod installed that fixes it, but if you hit the wrong button, you go back to the old old mode and it's just, it's, it's a flickering disaster. So that's to warn people of that. Anyway, here we begin. We're going to go with Jude. That's Jude, and next to him is Shadow. Uh, there is a control manual. Uh, we're not going to look at it. And there's also a game manual, but we're not going to look at that. But they're fully implemented as items. So, yeah, that starts on pretty much a downer. Uh, let's have a little look here at Jude. All the usual RPG stuff. Uh, the cheat book is for bug testing, and it will not be included as an available item in the final game, but it will be there. So, uh, if someone wants to hack it in... Um, 
they'll be able to do some uh, interesting stuff. This is just, this test escape here is just for getting out of battles quickly. Again, it won't be in the final version. Um, skills are learned, uh, magic skills use MP, tech skills, uh, you gain power during battle to use those. Um, standard equipment, status, and then the quest log. This is the first quest. You have your active quest, completed quest, and failed quests. Got a telephone over here. And I don't really remember where there are things, but this is um, a game where items are hidden in objects. So <laughs> search things. I'm kind of going to be meandering about just to show you some of the features, so hopefully this is interesting to you and not, like, completely boring. Um, so anyway, let's head out of the room and let's get this first quest done. This is the apartment building. I could use the stairs, but since I took the time to code this in, let's play with the elevator. Oops, overshot it to the basement, darn. What we got here? Laundry room. Oops. It certainly is a laundry room. <laughs> What's over here? Nothing, just trash. Oh, I forgot I can actually dash it, this gets like boring. Yeah, I don't want to go see the janitor's room anyway. Well, let's go upstairs. And let's go outside. I live in Grove Apartments, too. Let's talk to a few people. Maybe they're funny. You tell me. Oh, well, that's good to know. What's over here? Oh, hey, it's some lady in a weird hat. Yeah. Uh, I kind of want some of the people to be weird and some of them to just be rude. I think it's funny. That comes into play later. It's actually important. So, this is my first real outside map, and I've kind of made it too wide vertically. Not enough of it really fits on the screen, but it's too late to really change it. <laughs> uh, I do have some pretty big maps here, but I'm hoping people don't get lost. But... That was kind of the fun in old RPGs was figuring out how to get through areas, too. So, a little bit of that's not too bad. So, this is Jude Street. Um, honestly, that's a cancer reference. I saw the beginning was a bit of a downer. His name is Jude Hopkins, named after St. Jude's and John Hopkins. But I guess that's kind of a little blunt as far as uh, references go. I like this guy. I think I'm funny. Bus stops. Bus stops serve as the quick travel system. But uh, you have to check from back here. Let's see. Here's my parking lot with my really crappy looking cars. Somebody told me that they looked like Russian cars. I think that's funny. Oh, poor buddy. Well, this is a grocery store I'm supposed to go to, the Happy Potato Groceries. But let's see what's beyond at the moment. What do you have to say, lady? Stop it. Oh, I'm glad you feel that way. What's down here? Oh, look, it's their loading dock, because I know how these kind of things work. What do you have to say, buddy? <laughs> Sorry if I, I laugh at my own jokes, uh, if that's annoying to anyone. I'm just kind of like that. Grundle Cave up there is your first optional dungeon, but if you don't go there, you're going to be a little underleveled. I suggest going there. The Salary Man. Makes no sense in America, but again, this is uh, themed after JRPGs. So let's go in the grocery store. Oh, look, look at all those groceries. Wow, somebody took a lot of time drawing this, didn't they? Jeez. Wow, look at that, like, photorealistic fruit. 
<laughs> I'm at meat. Um, actually, the reason I bring that up is because I color sampled actual fruit, meat, and uh, vegetables to uh, make them look decent. And I think they turned out pretty well. Here's, you know, recycling machines. Anything in the trash can? Nope. Aw. This guy. Yeah. Oh, look, bathrooms. <clears throat> and of course, it's this trick. Of course, from the front of the counter. Drawing this whole um, conveyor belt and everything was actually a lot of fun to try and get it, like, feeling right. So eventually this becomes an actual store, of course, we can buy things, but right now it's just part of um, the opening of the game, so that's not activated yet. Candy bar is kind of an unusable item, because it has a point. Let's see what we got for, uh, wait, where the hell is that? Oh, yeah, duh. Here's Mom's groceries, so let's go give Mom her groceries. Do, 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 do. We're going to run back and give Mom her groceries. Oh, wait, what the hell is that thing? What fence? Okay, there's nothing freaky here. Okay, that is a little freaky. Well... All right. Yeah, we're a little freaky. Oh, cute trees. Reminds me of Paladin's Quest. Okay, that guy's. That's. That's a little upsetting. That one's winking at me. And that one's just dead. Okay. Oh, look. Look at Dead Man. Okay. Cool. I guess. Now, here we can see how the items work. If I go to weapons, they're actually based by rarity. And you'll notice that it shows the main stats, but it also shows item level, which is a comparison of base power, um, and extra stats like hit percentage and crit percentage. So I try to include all the information that it doesn't show you in the actual box to the right of the icon, because that can be useful in figuring out if something's worthwhile to equip or not, obviously. But let's go ahead and equip that. Now this music here is kind of loud, it's the default battle music and I haven't removed it yet, so sorry. Oh, spicy mouse. Yeah, you got some stuff. Now at this point in the game, what that signifies is how to use items, because it is now actually a usable item. But I'm not really scraped up that bad, because they didn't do much, so I'm not really going to bother to use it. Um, I drew this. I like it. Somebody told me it looks like a testicle. I disagree. Oh, look, I have a spell. Let's have a look at how this is. Okay, so see, now I have magic. Um, the blue icon means magic. The orange icon means tech. And you get a little description of what it costs to use. So let's uh, try it out.
doing good. We're out of that hellscape. Shadow is kind of an aggravating character. The idea is for it to be your ally, but also uh, kind of rude and pushy, because I think that's amusing. Yes, I'm going with the silent protagonist, but Shadow basically can be the voice of Jude. So let's go. Let's go up to... Where did I live? Fourth floor, first room, I think? Yeah. Hey, Mom. Yay, quest rewards. Okay, gotta call Grandma, I guess. Um, and let's look at the quest thing. Look, it's green. It's completed. I have finished that quest. All right, let's call. Oh, no, that's not. Let's, let's go this way. Call Grandma. Let's chat. We'll save. We'll save all the way down here on number 20. That's good. And I guess it's time for my appointment. That's kind of scary. Okay. And this is my little uh, room to see the doctor. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm actually kind of proud on how that paper towel dispenser looks transparent. That took a lot of work. But um, let's have a quick little look around. Let's see what is in here. Well, thanks for that hint. All right, now there's actually a lot to do here. Uh, this is the first dungeon. There's also a lot of side quests. Um, this, that TV is actually showing NASCAR. <laughs> um, we'll worry about all these running around crazy people later. I will show you that you are trapped here until you complete this. <laughs> Wrong button. This TV is showing a news program. But like I said, there's actually a lot to do here. Uh, there's a lot of side quests, a lot of people to talk to. But I'll leave that for another time. If you liked what you saw here... As far as the beginning of the game, let me know and I'll show you a little bit more where it gets into uh, different types of equipment, different types of spells and abilities, uh, some tech skills, uh, how the side quests really work. Um, I'll be happy to show you. Uh, until then, this is Shim from Drunk Dorks. Let's talk to Grandma. And here's the nice thing about Grandma. Grandma is also your uh, tip line. Sorry, I kind of gave the uh, end credits there a little too early. Let's see what our Grandma has to say. No, no, same thing. Well, we'll save. And we'll say goodbye. And I'll say goodbye. Keep watching.